Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about Agile and Waterfall. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I would love to hear your thoughts on Agile and Waterfall project management from your perspective. How is it, how do the two compare? Well, uh, Basically, I will argue to you that there are pros and there are cons, as with everything. Uh, usually, I like to say that the customers and your stakeholders, literally everybody who is not a developer, will want to do everything in a water style fashion, but they also will want to reserve the right to turn over and come in with scope changes at any time, which is much more of an agile thing. That is how the world wants to work. They want you to have perfect foresight and perfectly estimate everything at the start of everything. And they, whenever they make a mistake in the specification or something changes, they want the right to change their mind at any moment. That is how every single stakeholder that you have will want to work, all of them. The only time there is a exception to that is if the stakeholder is somebody who they themselves are aware of that they don't actually know what it is that they want. And then they actually want to do a agile, like usually if agile, like they will ask you for, can you make this? And then I'll come later with more stuff that you should build. And honestly, the debate between waterfall and agile is still raging strong and I don't think it's ever going to stop because there is a fundamental problem which means where we will never be able to settle on this just as we will never be able to settle on politics or any type of ideology there are different people who prefer different things because they like doing things in in different ways so it doesn't really matter whether or not you're using agile or you're using waterfall because you can make both work the reality is usually that no one that you work with will be a purist about the paradigm that they use. They're not going, you're never ever, apart from the very unfortunate souls who work with agile coaches, uh, you're never going to to meet a PO or a stakeholder who is a purist. Because there's no, def there's like, there's almost no way for you to define if you're doing agile or if you're doing waterfall. And there's always going to, it's, like it's, there's always going to be some flavor of your own thing. In my experience, what usually happens is that the stakeholder who leads the process, which is usually a PO of some sort, that person is going to have a personal preference on how they do work. They're going to look at everything from their perspective, depending on their level of management training, usually. The really good ones, they usually understand that they need to include other people. The really bad ones are simply going to say, this is how I want to do everything because it suits my work process. And then they're going to project that onto everybody else because they're the person in charge. And what then happens is that whatever process that they like is going to be one side of the spectrum. It's going to be either more agile or it's going to be more waterfall. And they're going to make up. Like they usually that's what we do. We label it as one or the other based on whatever, however deep our understanding of the thing is. It's the same thing as we used to. I mean, if you if you think that we should share the wealth in in a society, you're automatic automatically a communist, right? If you wear a cross, you're a Christian. Like it's uh, it's the it's the same thing. If you just have something that is close enough so that somebody can label you as one or the other, they're going to do that. And that's there's no difference here. Uh, this is what your PO is going to do. In my experience, the process that you pick has it's there's always pros and cons. The and I'm just gonna touch on the big stuff. In my experience, the two main things for me from each of these things, pros and cons, and then I'll tell you what I really believe is the di the the thing that makes the big difference. So when it comes to say agile, the strength, the real strength in agile, is that it allows for for you to do the minimum amount of work at every turn. Now this is a good thing, it can also be an extremely bad thing. The good thing about it is that you require less foresight 
In other words, you can get started quicker. You can ship things. But at the end of the day, that is what it is going to give you. It is going to give you a quicker iteration count or time to market because you're planning less work and shipping smaller pieces. This is very good uh, in one sense because if you do everything correctly, you will be able to ship something, see how it goes, and then ship the next thing and then kind of iterate on that thing. The downside is that this is an extremely hard thing to get right because most people who apply Agile uh, write shitty code and make shitty decisions and justify the fact that they're making shitty decisions with the idea that, oh, yeah, this is just version one. It can suck because version two is going to be so much better. The problem is that they can't foresee that they're going to think the same thing on version two and on version three and on version 4 and the thing is still a shit it's still shit you're just adding shit on top of shit it just it becomes a shit tower that's what it's going to what's going to happen that is usually uh, the ba what happens if you're doing agile incorrectly now on waterfall on the other hand now the strength with waterfall is that if you have good people who understand the system and they understand how to get a clear strong specification for what's going to be delivered there is probably nothing that will produce as high quality uh, software as waterfall the reason is because if you do it correctly you will have a very strong specification document that actually outlines the perspective of all the people who are going to be involved in the delivery of this project and this is a very good thing because it usually because w when this happens it's much more likely that you will catch security considerations and performance considerations like all of these different types of things that you may not have thought about if you were trying to optimize for speed or trying to get things out the door as quickly as possible or trying to minimize the amount of people who are going to be involved in the decision and the the planning process that is where waterfall really shines the downside with waterfall is that it is an enormous amount of upfront investment usually the process of waterfall is going to be slower than shipping something because it has to be slower because you're trying to scope you're trying to plan out a bigger chunk of work and have a much more qualitative process of delivering software and you because you can't really slice it back all that much and say well i'm just gonna have i don't know the p and this is where they this is where waterfall really goes wrong this is where it really goes wrong when you say that well oh, waterfall yeah it's so expensive we have all these people they're just sitting around like planning things out and like trying to create a perfect specification and it's costing us money and time and we need to stretch ship we need to ship quicker can we just sh cut out all the people all the different stakeholders like the developers and the qas and the security people and so forth and just have the po do the waterfall thing well what just happened is that now you're making these long big the investment with a fraction of the people who need to be involved to make it a qualitative thing you're actually now you're you're simply increasing the prep work of the PO but you're not actually increasing the quality of the work now there is a big benefit in having a lot of prep work for the PO uh, to have that in place before you go over to the next stage the problem is usually that if you come with six months of work and you haven't really involved all the like the developers or like the rest of this like the, the delivery pipeline in the specification you're st you're gonna have to like re-explain six months of work and it's actually going to turn out with a lot of holes and a lot of oversights and that is the downside of waterfall that is the reason why people moved over to agile in the first place because waterfall when it's done incorrectly is just a big massive specification that one person might understand and everybody else is just trying to figure out okay what are we supposed to be building so what I want you to take away from this is that agile and waterfall doesn't really matter which one you use because they have pros and they have cons and which one you use is usually just going to be a reflection of the value system of the person who like I like to call it well the loving term is hippo highest highest paid person opinion that is the per that is the that person's personal process is usually 
a the the thing that you're going to use whatever that is closest to you. Uh, usually it's going to be agile or waterfall and they're going to use whatever term they like based on their understanding of what these two things mean in my experience the thing that really makes a difference is the experience level of the people working in the team that is the thing that is going to dictate how well your process works. I have seen people fuck up waterfall. I've seen people fuck up agile. And the the when it really works, it comes down to one single thing, and that is that you have open, clear communication and trust between senior, experienced people who really know how to get things done. If you have that, they will actually create their own process that works much, much better than anything that you can copy paste from some blog, or, or blog article about agile processes or some architect who's been alive for a million years and whose who's only com commitment in life was to the waterfall process. These people with the right experience and the right trust and communication, they will create a process that completely blows any of these copy paste solutions out of the water because they're tailoring it, it tailoring it, it they're tailoring their solution and the way they work to the people who make up the group and that is always the best solution have a great day